Hello, loves. I'm super excited and absolutely delighted to introduce Mel Andrews, who is a feminine embodiment coach. And her hometown is Melbourne, which is my hometown too. So I already feel this like beautiful connection with you, Mel. And um, we met on Instagram, which has just been something that I find, you know, this, this, this social media thing, it's like we can meet and we can connect in this really beautiful way, which we have, right? And, you know, we can use social media for these really beautiful opportunities. So, you know, if you're joining us on um, Instagram or Facebook Live or via email, uh, welcome, darlings. And, um, yeah, this is Mel. Hi, Mel. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have a chat. Absolute pleasure, darling. Um, Mel, like, I, I, I want to I wanna really get to your work as a feminine body embodiment coach. I find that super interesting. And I know the women listening will love to hear about the womb work that you're doing as well. So we're going we're gonna to loop back to that. But I really want to start... Um, as I always do, talking about menstruation. And my questions are, can you remember the first time you menstruated? Yes, I can. Um, I can't remember how old I was. I think I was 13 or 14. And I just remember waking up one morning and I literally just had blood pouring down my leg and I had no idea what to do. Um, and I just remember like my first thought was just shame. Like I didn't want anyone to know that I was bleeding. So I literally went and stole like my mum's sanitary pads and I didn't tell my mum for like a good week that I'd started bleeding. Um, but I think she'd probably worked it out <laughs> when she saw that most of her stash was missing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it wasn't, it probably wasn't the best experience for me. Um, I don't think I was really educated around what menstruation was. Um, and I just basically saw it as a curse um, from then onwards until recent years. Wow. Wow, Mel, I'm, I'm really feeling you on that one. And I did want to ask how this, this first experience with with uh your first menstrual experience how that uh affected uh your relationship with your bleeding times in in like later on as you you were um yeah growing up yeah um well i think it affected me quite a bit i um just just hated my period like i just thought oh my gosh it just so horrible to be a woman it's such a curse to have you know this bleed every month um I always had really horrible periods growing up like lots of pain I always felt faint and tired and the message that I always received was you know just to push through it it's just you know you're a woman just push through it just keep going um and I just thought oh my god that's so unfair like why do I have this thing and why do I have to keep pushing through it like it just doesn't seem right to me yeah, it's that um, that thing that I often say. It's like the plug it up, she'll be right. Pretend it's not happening. Um, uh, yeah, you know, like it's it's one of those things that we as as embodied feminine, no matter what age, feel the effects of of, of shame around. And I'm wondering, Mal, how because I know what you do now. What was the piece that was, and, and when was it that you were able to, to shift that shame and, and, and work more in a cyclical, cyclic way? Um, so I actually went on the pill when I got to my early 20s because I just thought, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I just want to get on with living my life. And probably my late 20s, early 30s, I started to do some research and realise how bad the pill was for me. Um, so I was really, really scared to come off the pill because I knew how horrible my periods had been beforehand. And when I did make the jump to come off the pill, they did come back a hundred times worse than what they were when I was growing up. And I just knew that I had to do something about it. I had to learn more about my menstrual cycle and 
I just knew that there had to be a better way. Um, so I started seeing an acupuncturist who is just absolutely incredible, um, made such a difference. Um, I got into yoga because I thought that will help with my stress and anxiety and hopefully that will bring my pain levels down as well. And then when I finished my yoga teacher training, I was actually having a chat with my acupuncturist and I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my yoga teacher training. I know I really want to help women, um, but I just don't know what that looks like. And then all of a sudden it occurred to me that I could start doing work around the menstrual cycle and helping women that way and fertility and, you know, all of that juicy, beautiful womb work. So I really threw myself into extra training and extra research and courses and, you know, just found out as much as I could in order to really develop my work. And, um, you know, I've done a lot of a lot of work around my own womb, my own womb centre, and it's just been incredible. And I just, I just can't believe that it took me so long. And I feel like a lot of women are the same. And, you know, we're learning a lot later in life how much of a beautiful gift our menstrual cycle is. And if I can help anyone have a better experience with their menstrual cycle, then, you know, that's what I want to do. Um, what, what are your moon time rituals now that, that you feel are things that nourish and support you that you'd love to share with, with other sisters watching this today that may be feeling like, like you said before, it's a curse and they're not that connected to it? Um, so there's quite a few little things that I do, um, but I definitely tap into my intuition and to see how I'm feeling. Um, but I really like to do womb meditations and just really, you know, nurture and nourish my womb and send a lot of love to my womb and tell her that she's appreciated and that she's loved and that I'm here for her. Um, I really love doing restorative yoga. Restorative yoga is probably my best friend. Um, it's just really relaxing and nourishing and just takes any stress and anxiety away from me. And that's really important during our bleed time and just giving myself as much rest and nourishment as I can, especially for the first few days. I just think that's most important. So I think you mentioned um, yoga and I, and I, I had a note to, to ask you because I know that um, you also hold workshops on restorative yoga in Melbourne. If anyone's watching, you can connect with Mel for those. Uh, what are the, the postures that you feel are the most restorative and nurturing and beneficial while you're on your moon time? So, you know, those first few days, if you're wanting to, to do yoga, what, yeah, other postures that you recommend? Um, I probably have two favourite poses. Um, the first is child's pose on a bolster or on top of like a couple of um, pillows. Uh -huh. I just find that that really massages into the womb space and gives that really beautiful feeling. Um, can really help with cramps as well. And then um, bound angle pose again on a bolster. Um, just that really beautiful hip opening um, just creating extra space in your womb as well. Um, I just feel that's really beneficial and calming. So um, child pose, I know. Yeah. Yep. And what the other one was bound angle pose. Is that like a like sitting with your legs in a butter? Is it butterfly? Like yes, yes, that would be another word for it. Yeah. <laughs> and do you do you fold forward slightly? Um, so I like to go back onto a bolster. So yeah, a bit of a bit of an elevated bolster. Yeah. And I usually find after five or ten minutes, I'm ready to fall asleep. It is the most relaxing, beautiful pose. Awesome. Thank you for that tip, darling. And how long do you find? I know you're like falling asleep, but how long do you find? Like, are you counting breaths, or are you 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 know allowing this? juicy dreamlike state to wash over you while you're in these poses and lose hours you know if someone's just learning this how long should they stay there i would say if you're just learning probably um anywhere from five to 15 minutes so whatever someone is comfortable with and again it's just tapping into how you're feeling and how um you feel staying in the pose um personally for me especially when i'm doing the butterfly on my back 
um, I could probably stay in it for 20 minutes to half an hour and just really just let it wash over me. And it's just such a beautiful feeling. Delicious. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Sharing. That's gold, Mel. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'd love to know a little more about the, uh, the, the womb meditation as well. That I, like, how, how would that look? Again, like for, for myself, if I'm wanting to do a womb meditation, am I in the bath? Am I naked? Like, how do I even like start to <laughs> connect with um, my womb? And I know you call it the, the space her. So how does one even connect deeply to the womb? Um, so there's a lot of different ways. Um, personally, I run guided meditation. So it's kind of like a little bit of an adventure into your womb. Um, but if you're doing it at home on your own, um, I would I, a really nice way to do it is by placing one hand on your heart and one hand on your womb. And just envisioning a golden light between your heart and your womb space. And just, you know, having it fill your womb and that golden light getting bigger and bigger, just really nurturing that space and connecting in and just seeing how you feel. Um, and also asking the womb, you know, what's going on and how are you feeling and seeing if you get any answers back as well. Beautiful. Have you had answers back when, you, when, you, when you've been in that space and asked how, how you're going? Um, yeah, absolutely. I've had, um, I've definitely had a lot of answers back, um, especially during my bleed time, because that's when I'm the most intuitive. Um, and I feel the more that I do practice um, tapping into my womb centre, the more I start seeing more and, and feeling more as well. Yeah. Have you noticed since doing this work that your psych, we're living psychically, but also your psychic ability is enhanced yeah absolutely it's really amazing um I, I actually now look forward to my bleed time because I'm I feel like even more psychic during that time so I like I get really excited I'm like oh I wonder what messages are going to be here for me during my next bleed time so it's really exciting it is isn't it yeah yeah and do you journal those and keep a keep a record of, of yeah these dreamings yeah, I do. Um, I feel like it's a really good way to get your feelings out as well and that way you're not holding on to things and you're writing everything down and letting it out. Amazing. Um, so, okay, to, to, I think that, that's a really beautiful, juicy um, yeah, section because you've given us a couple of yoga poses and taught us about womb, connecting to your womb and womb meditation. Um, I'd like to circle back to... Uh, how you found this has enhanced your life working in, and living in this way um, we, we said more psychic more psychic abilities but is there anything else that you're finding um, yeah that has in, magnified and amplified and manifested in your life by living in tune with your menstrual cycle um, yeah absolutely I think beforehand I was definitely living in my masculine energy all of the time I didn't even know what my feminine energy was I was just always busy and on the go and um, I lived in a very stressful state and that's how I thrived um, and now I live in a very blissful state most of the time <laughs> and a more relaxed state so I'm actually finding that I have a lot more joy in life as well and um, I feel like a lot of my relationships have grown um, with family and friends and I think just like I'm living in alignment with what I'm meant to be doing and that's, you know, womb work and helping women. And, you know, I believe that everyone is here for a reason and everyone has gifts to share and everyone's beautiful and unique. And I feel like doing womb work, that's, you know, there's so much to discover in that about yourself. Amazing. Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, it would be awesome to maybe get you on another call and share a womb meditation. We'll talk about that, but uh, I'll, I'll post a link at the bottom of, of this video for anyone that wants to connect with Mel, especially if you're in Melbourne, uh, because it's opening up now. Your lockdown is starting to become yeah, uh, a lot less strict. And I, I feel like you could get to one of her classes, which, you know, 
that that's the the key isn't it that embodiment and yeah. sometimes it needs to be like go to a class connect with another group of women that are all working together like this and creating sisterhood as well through that that womb web it's a really beautiful beautiful way to to be so i really appreciate your time thank you so much it's so good to be here it's just lovely chatting it's, you know favorite topic so <laughs> mine too mine yeah. too all right don't hang up i'm gonna stop the recording <laughs> much love thank you ladies see ya